Ruth chapter number one. Amen. Hallelujah. Ruth chapter number one. And it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi. And the name of his two sons, Malion and Chilion, Ephratites of Benjamin, Judah. And when they came into the country of Moab and continued there, and they came into the country of Moab and continued there, and Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpha, the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelled there, they dwelled there about ten years. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left with her two sons and her husband. And she arose with her daughters in law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Amen. I'm going to preach to you for just a little while this morning about sojourning in Moab. Amen. Sojourning in Moab. Amen. I need you to put your Bibles down and just begin to lift up the name of the Lord right now. Come on. Together with me right now, begin to lift up the name of the Lord. God, we need your help today. God, I ask that you would penetrate hearts, that you would move, that you would minister, that you would let your anointing begin to fall right now, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. And somebody said, in the name of Jesus, and you could be seated. Amen. I, I do apologize in advance if you came to hear an evangelistic sermon message this morning because this is going to be somewhat pastoral and by nature. I know that you can be, that everyone here will be able to get something out of it. But a lot of times Sunday morning is the best shot I got at the preaching at the saints of God. Amen. Because you're all here and that's important if you want to hear what has to be said. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a dangerous thing to leave Bethlehem Judah behind and to begin to wander into the land of Moab. Can I get an amen from somebody? Things must have seemed pretty bad at the time for Elimelech to leave Bethlehem Judah to travel to Moab. Or maybe he just got disillusioned, Brother Devin, and dissatisfied with his, where he was. And the grass started to look greener on the other side of the fence. Has anybody ever been there before? Bethlehem means the house of bread, and Judah means praise. Have you ever, you've got to be careful when you start wandering in your life and you start looking for answers away from the place of bread and the house of worship. Amen. Is anyone hearing me this morning? It's dangerous to be sojourning in Moab. Moab was a land filled with strange customs and false gods and many unforeseen evils and dangers. The people of Moab were the cursed descendants of the incestuous relationship between Lot and his daughters which produced Ammon and Moab, forever the enemies of the Israelites. And Chemosh was the god of the Moabites, often worshipped by the worst means possible and that was by, with, by human sacrifice. While some people may argue that this famine was in Bethlehem, Judah was enough reason that Elimelech could have left and should have left and to set out and search for a better place and a better deal. By reading this story and by looking at the end results, I don't think that Elimelech's journey could have gotten much worse than it actually did. To sojourn means to dwell for a time or to dwell or live in a place as a temporary resident or as a stranger, not considering the place as a, as a permanent habitation, never intending to stay, but he couldn't get back once he left. Moab didn't hold all the answers and was not devoid of its own set of problems. Church family, it's dangerous business to sojourn into the land of Moab. If I have a choice, I want to keep my family close to the house of bread and to the place of praise. You won't ever go wrong keeping your family close to the place of worship and word. And you won't ever go wrong with keeping them within the parameters that God has laid out so that they can be safely covered under the umbrella of his mercy, protection, and provision. Can I get an amen from somebody? It's dangerous to sojourn into Moab. When you read this entire story, you will see that God's provision began to first come to his people in Bethlehem, Judah. It didn't first come to Moab, but it first came to Bethlehem, Judah. 
I, I, when you're, the thing that, that Naomi and, and Elimelech left to find, God brought to the place that they had left. I wonder how many times people of God have become impatient in their walk with God and they have left before the blessing started to flow. I wonder if there's not a little bit of a limelech in all of us that gets dissatisfied with where we are in our lives and we start looking toward Moab for our answers. My marriage isn't what it used to be. This house that I'm living in doesn't suit me anymore. I'm so tired of my job. I'm tired of my old friends. My social circle doesn't fulfill my needs anymore. I need some new friends. I'm tired of living for God. I just want to have some fun while I'm still young. I'm tired of waiting for that Holy Ghost filled young man or young woman to cut along, come along. I'm just going to find me a husband or a wife and just work things out and let the chips fall where they may. It's dangerous to sojourn into Moab, church family. I'm preaching to somebody that the Holy Ghost is, 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 is churning and burning inside of me and I'm preaching to somebody this morning. The dangers of sojourning into an unknown, un, untried land of Moab. Elimelech, whose name meant my God is king, died in that place where they were, that was known as the people of Chemosh, the people that sacrificed their babies to the heathen gods. And Limelech, not only did he die, but he also lost Malion, his son, which meant the tender-hearted one. He lost him in the land of Moab. Chilion, which meant beautiful completeness or perfection. They all died in the strange land of Moab. Naomi didn't, she made it back to Bethlehem. But when she was forever changed and scarred, her name at first meant God is sweetness or Yah is sweetness. But when she got back to Bethlehem, she told them, she could call me Mara because my soul is bitter within me. It's dangerous, church family, to take a journey into Moab and leave the house of worship and the place of praise. The house of bread. Bethlehem shall be called the house of bread. It's a place where you find your sustenance. You find your strength. You find everything that you need. It's dangerous. You better think long and hard before you leave the house of God and start seeking your answers in the devil's backyard. There are unforeseen hazards and wickednesses around every corner. If you're going to launch out like Abraham, you better be sure God spoke for you to do so. Or you could end up like a Limelech. Nowhere in the word of God that I find anywhere where God spoke to this man and said, I want you to take your family to sojourn, to move to Moab. You see, a journey has an ending. God will take you on journeys from place to place to place sometimes, but God hardly ever tells you to wander out with no direction, no purpose, no place that you are going just to see what you can find, what kind of mischief that you can get into. You better be sure as God talking to you, not just a discomforted, dissatisfied spirit of Elimelech, because the results could be disastrous in your life. I know that sometimes life causes us to have to make changes and to make some moves in the physical. But I'm talking about some sojourning in the spiritual realm, backsliding in your spirit, letting yourself get cold and indifferent to the things of God. And all of a sudden, you're looking for your entertainments in the world. You're looking for your pleasures in the world and your fun outside the perimeters of God's kingdom, looking for something to fill that hunger inside of you from the pleasures of this world instead of being satisfied with the things of God inside the house of of God and the kingdom of God. You start letting things that are not important to God become important in your life. The things like the love of money, which is the scripture says the root of all evil. You let it begin to creep in your heart and you start to fulfill, to try to fulfill the lust of the eye, the lust of the press, the flesh and the pride of life outside of Bethlehem, Judah to a strange land called Moab. There are unintended consequences for living in Moab. Church family, listen to me. 
Your children get tied up with the Moabitish women. I know this book is about Ruth, but the only reason that it worked out for Ruth to follow Naomi back home and to marry Boaz was because she made a pledge and she made an oath and she converted over to Judaism and she became a follower of the one true God. Ruth was the exception to the rule, not the rule. She was not, she was the exception to the rule, not the rule itself. There was another daughter-in-law, Orpha, that decided to go. If you go back and read it, it says she went back to her God. Never heard from her again. She went back to the God that was okay that they sacrificed their babies alive to them. Unintended consequences for sojourning in Moab. Church family, we need to learn to trust God and sometimes that means working through the difficult times but not evacuating from the place you are, but rather staying under the hand of protection and safety in God's house. Hallelujah. A change of address didn't change anything or help anything for Elimelech. We all have to deal with the drive and the desire to want to help God out sometimes by making our own plans and call them the will of God when we really haven't prayed and haven't sought his face and haven't fasted at all. But God's plan is it, but, 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 but it's God's plan that each and every one of us find happiness and joy and strength in the house of the Lord. And we live as victorious Christians moving forward with what God would really want us to be doing. It's dangerous to sojourn into Moab. Body God. It's not God's will. That we live constantly in a state of turmoil and confusion, always looking back at the world that we came from, like Lot's wife leaving Sodom and Gomorrah with a long, full, wishful eye saying, I wish I could just get back and have one more day of fun, one more night of entertainment and fun. But it's God's will that we live like satisfied, fulfilled Christians basking in the joy and the power and the provision that naturally comes our way when we keep ourselves as proper children of the kingdom of God in proper relationship with him. The devil loves to beat us up by assaulting our minds with negative thoughts, causing us to be worried and fearful. But we have a greater power, church family, than this world on the inside of us. We have a greater power living on the inside of us. Can somebody just help me preach for a little while? We don't have to get distracted and we don't have to become dissatisfied. The scripture says that godliness with contentment is great gain. Come on. We don't have to get discontented because Jesus told us that his joy would make our joy complete. Does anybody still understand what I'm preaching about? When we get Jesus living on the inside, the things that used to be important suddenly lose their importance and we begin to get things back in proper perspective in our lives. Why do you think it's so important that we pray and we keep in contact with God? We read our word and we follow the plans of the word of God. We follow the plan of salvation and his doctrinal pathway. It's so that we can keep our minds and our hearts right so that our motives don't get misaligned and we don't begin to get discontented and dissatisfied in Bethlehem, Judah, the place that will provide everything that you need David wrote and said I once was young but now I'm old but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread sometimes the world wants to sing the siren song and tell you I have all the answers for you but it's just a trick it's just a mirage coming from Moab into your life that God is what God is reaching for you today and he's saying if somehow or another you could just get back in my presence and you can get back under the spout where the glory is pouring out. I can realign your thoughts. I can realign your motives. I can realign your heart and I can put you back in proper perspective again. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord some praise today. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for a chance. Lord, to live in a place of provision, a place where your glory falls, a place where your hand abides, a place where your mercy flows, Lord, like rain every day, mighty God. Hallelujah. It's dangerous, church family, to sojourn into the land of Moab. We have to let our spirits and our hearts stay right. 
Hallelujah. John chapter 16 and 33 tells us, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Listen to me, church family. As long as we are in this world, we don't have to be of this world because we have a power working on the inside of us that we don't have to see the world through the same lens that the world sees it. We can put on the righteousness of God and we can begin to understand that there is a higher plateau plateau and a higher plane that we can live in. There's a higher road that we can walk on. There's a higher way of living that we can participate in. We don't have to resort to to trespassing into the land of Moab. And we don't have to begin to let our our spirits and our hearts and the lives of our families begin to transgress the edict of the word of God. The closer we get to God, the less important that the things of this world seem. But the further we get away from God, the more important that this world becomes in our life. If you want to learn how to moderate those desires, to wander into Moab that sometimes come in your mind, you need to stay as close to God in your spiritual life as possible. Musicians, come, I'm almost through. As you become become more aware of your surroundings, your daily walk, in your daily walk, your priorities will change and all of a sudden you'll start saying hey I don't, I'm not supposed to be here I, I realize now hey as you start to wake up and to realize hey the answer to what I was looking for was right there in Bethlehem Judah all along the, the bread with the provision was right there all along God's hand was promised to come back there. He had promised, made promises, made oaths, made all kind of commitments to the children of Israel. He wasn't going to leave them and forsake them, but somehow in Elimelech's mind, he forgot about the things that God had promised them. And he just got disillusioned. And he got dissatisfied. And he got disgruntled about something. And he said, you know what, I'm going to find something a little better than what I've got going on here at the house of bread and the place of praise. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. Maybe you're about to make that step. Maybe you're about to make that move. Maybe you're about to do that thing, but the Holy Ghost is talking to you today. Come on, somebody. The Holy Ghost is ministering in somebody today. Maybe you already have made that trip into Moab now and your heart's bitter and your spirit's bitter. You've got some bitterness hiding in your heart. You're left sweet and you're left happy and full. But all of a sudden those years of wandering in Moab have stolen away some things and there's bitterness in your spirit. The Holy Ghost is talking to you today and He says, I can make it right. I can bring hope. I can bring deliverance. I can bring peace. I can bring power back into your life. I can restore your heritage that you thought you had lost. I can reconnect you to the vine once again. I can let that kinsman redeemer come and and restore your lineage back again. I'm preaching to somebody. Stand with me today all over the house. Hallelujah. Moab is in all it's cracked up to be. Moab will take away the sweetness out of your life and give you bitterness in exchange, church family. If you've been struggling this week in your spirit, there's been some turmoil going on inside of you, I believe there's some people in this place that need to come down to this altar this morning. You've made a little sojourn. You've made a little trip out into Moab. Maybe you didn't ever leave your pew, but something in your spirit went awry. Something in your heart was turned off and you began to get cold and indifferent and you walked away in your mind from the house of God and the things of God. You lost your burden for the house of God. The Holy Ghost is calling you back this morning. He said there's still bread in Bethlehem. The scripture says that Naomi heard. If you go back and you study that passage of scripture, those the, the, the theologians of those of the that read the, from the ancient Greek Talmud and the different theologians, they say 
that an angel of the Lord visited, visited Naomi in that foreign land of Moab. And they tell, it's not, in the, it's not in between the scriptures, but if you study and you dig into it, you see they said that an angel of the Lord visited Naomi in Moab. That was a messenger from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost sent a messenger into Moab. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. There's a messenger going forth into Moab today and it's trying to arrest your mind and get your attention and to pull you back to the place where God's provision is still flowing for your life. All over the house. Heads bowed, eyes closed. The Holy Ghost is talking to some people this morning. If I'm talking to you, if this is hit, if this is landed anywhere close to you today, I believe that there, this altar needs to be a place where you can become and you can begin to let the Holy Ghost refresh your life. And you can begin to let God realign your mind and your motives and your it can bring your thinking back right back around right again. Listen to what Psalms chapter 16 says. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee, not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. That's Moab. That's Chemosh, that's Molech. That's the God of Ammon and Moab. The twin gods of Ammon and Moab. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer nor take up their name upon my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. And thou maintainest my lot. And I was just, I was just studying this this week. Whenever Naomi got back to Bethlehem, Brother Bingham, there was still a place for her. There was still an inheritance that she could tap into. There was still something left for her to go back for. I'm preaching to somebody today. You feel like you've lost connection with your inheritance, but you can still come back to the house of God. You can plug back in and they're going to look at you and going to say, Naomi, where have you been gone so long for? Why did you leave? The Lord was going to provide. Listen to me, church family. It's not our job to judge those when they begin to come back. But it's our job to open up our arms and say, Hey, we want you to come back. We love you. We didn't ever want you to leave. We didn't ever want you to go on that journey to Moab. But we wished you had stayed here all along. Hallelujah. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fall, fallen upon me in pleasant places. Yea, I, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. And in thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I'm preaching to somebody today. If you've become dissatisfied in your spirit. If you've become discontented and there's just some things gnawing at your soul. That I'm telling you if you'll get back into the presence of the Lord. If you'll come down to this altar and you'll begin to let the Holy Ghost fill you fresh and new, and you'll get in His presence and you'll stay in His presence, the Holy Ghost will bring the fullness of joy back to your life that you need to live a victorious Christian life. Hallelujah. At thy right hand, their pleasures forevermore. If I'm talking to you this morning, open, these altars are open. Begin to make your way down here.